Hi there, I'm Dr. Michael Emery, co-director of the Sports Cardiology Center at the Cleveland Clinic. And I'm Tamana Singh, I'm also the co-director of the Sports Cardiology Center here at the clinic. And we're very excited to talk to you about some new developments that have uh, come up within our sports cardiology section with the American College of Cardiology. And they all revolve around something that's very relevant to us now, which is the COVID-19 pandemic, specifically how it relates to athletes, recreational, all the way to professional. So Dr. Emery, would you like to comment on some of the revelations that you and some of the other sports cardiologists have made with regards to our current recommendations for these athletes? Sure. Well, we, we put out a statement um, endorsed by the American College of Cardiology Sports and Exercise Council published in JAMA Cardiology. It came out in mid-May. It was a pretty brief uh, statement, um, but an algorithm on, on what to do, particularly for high-intensity athletes and university or professional athletes who may test positive for COVID-19. Um, I preface this by saying that there are guidelines, not mandates, and they're based upon ours and others' expert opinion, not driven by data, which we really don't have a lot of data, particularly in athletes right now. A lot of the data is driven on what we see in the inpatient world, where it seems to be a higher or uh, prevalence of cardiac involvement in this virus in particular than other viruses. So that brought our level of concern back to athletes who may be exercising intensely particularly in the setting of having active COVID or even just mild symptoms. And we were really quite concerned that there could be a higher prevalence of cardiac involvement even in the outpatient setting with this disease state than there is with other respiratory viral infections such as the flu or the common cold. Um, so we were very conservative in regards to our recommendations. Um, those started with the, the asymptomatic athlete who tests positive for COVID. That may be someone that was exposed and got tested but never had symptoms. Or, as we're seeing with a lot of university-based systems right now, they're all being screened universally across the board, um, and they may test positive for COVID-19 and not have symptoms. So the asymptomatic athlete we recommended just rest for two weeks. That correlates with a two-week period of isolation and quarantine they're going to have anyway, but also the concern if there is a viral infection, even if they're currently asymptomatic, that there's some animal data driven, or excuse me, animal data that says that if you exercise intensely in the setting of a viral infection, you increase your risk for myocardial involvement. Beyond the totally asymptomatic athlete, if you have any degree of symptoms, once you've recovered and completely recovered, then we recommended some additional cardiac testing that we typically don't do in the setting of, for instance, the flu or anything else when there's not concern for myocardial involvement. That was a great summary of the current recommendations. And I think Dr. Emery highlighted a key point here, which is that it's really important to use your clinical gestalt in addition to some of these recommendations when you are evaluating athletes in your clinic. And that's exactly what I have been doing in mine particularly with collegiate athletes who are trying to maintain some level of conditioning and exercise as they're waiting, returning to play on campuses. Additionally, some of our recreational master's athletes who are concerned about their exposure to COVID. Several of these individuals have had some symptoms that may have been suggestive of COVID. And so it's been very helpful to use some of these recommendations as I evaluate these patients when we're discussing whether or not they can return to play or return to their usual recreational activities. Yeah, and I think it's important that everyone realize that these are guidelines, not mandates. I said that once before, but that keeps a question that keeps coming up that gets asked to both of us, not infrequently. Um, clinical gestalt is important. Um, you know, if there's concern for cardiac involvement, you're going to push more uh, aggressively looking for it. Um, whether there is less concern for cardiac involvement, um, that may drive how extensively you do cardiac testing. Uh, and then, you know, when we talked about return after you've recovered, we recommended a slow return. That slow return partly is predicated on realizing that you just took an athlete out of training for two weeks, and they may have been totally sedentary for two weeks, and they've detrained. So not to try to throw them back into the rest of the team who had been training all along. You really need to start them slow, realizing they just, just detrained. That's a great point. One of the other things that we'll probably be seeing as we roll into the later summer months and early fall is returning to campuses or returning to seasonal sports and uh, 
uh, having to discuss what to do with pre-participation screening. So that's definitely one thing that here at the Cleveland Clinic, we're working closely with our sports medicine physicians, um, our team physicians for all of the colleges in the surrounding area, as well as those associated with the professional sports that we are affiliated with. So that's definitely something that Dr. Emery and I will continue to be focused on. Yeah, clear communication with our primary care sports medicine colleagues is super important in these situations. This is a very scary, unknown time. A lot of them are just trying to get their athletes back on campus or, or back into their facilities. Um, and, and to worry about cardiac involvement is another level of concern that we can drastically help take off their plate. And this is definitely a platform that we can use. You know, hopefully this type of situation, this pandemic is not something that we will continue to see in our foreseeable future, but I do think it does give us some leverage with regards to creating an algorithm so that when we do approach a similar situation, we're ready to go ahead and address it head on. Yeah, and I think on top of that, it gives us the opportunity to, to, to collect data that we don't have on other viral infections, but to collect real data so that in the future, we can actually have data driving these recommendations and a little less just plain expert opinion. Exactly. Well, Dr. Emery, I think that was a great summary of these current guidelines. I'm really excited to see what we can do with regards to some of that data gathering you were talking about. Um, and I look forward to seeing what we can do to help our athletes get back to the field. I agree.